Hello everybody. I thought I would try another knot. I haven't taught one in a while. This is a sheep shank and I ordinarily wouldn't teach this knot but I found another use for it that I really like and wanted to demonstrate that. Uh, the sheep shank is uh, easy to tie but it's undependable. Uh, you never know for sure uh, if you're going to really pull a lot of weight on it whether it's going to break free uh, or whether it's going to hold. But uh, the way I was originally taught to tie this knot, let's give myself a little bit more rope. Originally I was taught to tie that knot by uh, making a zigzag like this and then you make a little half hitch and tuck that loop through there and then on this side here make a half hitch and tuck this loop through here and there you have your sheep shank and if you really pull on this hard uh, depending on your rope and everything a lot of the times most of the time it's going to grip really well but there are times when you can put a lot of weight and it will break free like that so uh, they talk about using uh, the middle line doesn't take any of the load and cutting that knot line to repel uh, down the side of a mountain so that you could tie this short end off on a tree and tie your sheep shank and cut the middle line and then uh, get most of your rope back. But you can see from that last example, it's not something you really want to depend on. It's kind of, would be really a scary situation. Uh, another way to tie it is to tie, tie uh, to make three loops. This is what uh, a lot of the rock climbers actually would use if they're using it to say strengthen the rope. Uh, but uh, anyway, you tie those three and then you tuck your, your rope in here and here like this and there's your there's your half hitches let's pull that one and that one and there's your sheep shank this time it's probably going to hold a little better than the last time but see i'm putting a lot of weight on there but i don't know that i would trust myself climbing down a cliff so one more thing uh the the reason that i'm showing this is um when I've, I explained uh, in one of my other videos, I was talking about hauling brush and pulling the rope, trying to make it a little handle, you know, like with a with a bowline or something. And, and pulling on that rope can get rough on your hands after you're pulling uh, for an afternoon. And it was, I thought it would be really nice to have a handle. Well, that sheep shank actually works really well to make yourself a handle that's much more comfortable to grab. So I'm going to go ahead and make this sheep shank, like so, and then this one right here, okay, and now I have my sheep shank, and you can see that if I were to grab this this way, and now I'm going to tie, let's do an adjustable grip hitch, I'll show you how you tie that, I'm going to just uh, come over the line once, and twice then this one handed I'm not so sure uh, but that's kind of like you would start a taut line hitch and instead of coming up over the top I'm going to go ahead and drop that I'm just going to come around both of these ropes and through that loop and snug it up and what I have now is an adjustable loop that slides sorry slides up the rope but if i pull on it if i pull on it you can see it's not sliding but i can adjust it down if i wanted or up but i'm going to adjust it until that handle is perpendicular to the rope that i'm pulling and now I've got a comfortable handle. I can pull that rope. And it's way better than trying to grab just a single rope. In fact, you could make uh, your sheep shank and make an extra zigzag in there. And you'd have five instead of three ropes here. And it's even more comfortable. I'm going to take a look at this uh, adjustable grip hitch too. And show you how that looks uh, up close. So... You can see that by going around both legs of this loop, 
when you pull on this rope, it this rope kind of pinches this down and makes this turn and bite even better. So it grips a lot better than say a taut line hitch, but it's also still adjustable up and down the rope. But when you put your, put your weight on it and try and pull it, see, that turns, it doesn't slide. It holds real well. So anyway, that is the use. And uh, one more thing I wanted to show then uh, is that handle also I tied uh, up here. And you see I made it much longer. And uh, you could use that as a shoulder strap. Uh, so that coming across your shoulder when you're hauling, say, logs or something with this little rope that's too small uh, is going to be a lot more comfortable than this across your shoulder. And uh, also, uh, for that, since I was going to be putting a lot of load on there, on these, um, this sheep shank, after I did my first half hitch, I did a second half hitch, and I made it go over the inside of the first one. Let me show you. So here's the original one like that and then I made another half hitch and I went and tucked all that through including the first hitch and then when you tighten that that grabs and it really uh, makes that much more secure you don't have to worry about that coming apart my rope was too long so I used that sheep shank to shorten it um, and then one other thing I've seen people do is you would take this end of the rope and tuck it through here instead of doing that sec other hitch. And if you do that, I'm just gonna kinda go through like this. But you can see, if you do that, pretend that's only one rope. If you look at that, that looks a whole lot, let me get my camera to focus. Anyway, that looks a lot like a bowling, and you can do that on both ends and it will grow, hold without slipping. But you have to feed the rope all the way through. So anyway, that is the sheep shank uh, and some uses for it that I found that uh, I might actually be uh, likely to use. Um, and so I thought it was interesting. I hope you have a nice day. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.